Today, we're going to be diving into the ultimate tier list for the best and worst legends in season 21. Whether you're looking to climb the ranks or just secure more victories, I've got you guys covered. Remember, this is just my opinion, so if you guys disagree with any of my rankings, let me know why in the comments down below. I came up with these rankings based on a few different factors like how much do they contribute to the team, how good are they at what they do, and how good is their individual kit. First off, we have the D tier or the worst legends in the game. Starting off our list, we've got Seer. This guy has fallen so far from his release. When Seer first came to the game, he was probably one of the strongest legends we've ever had in the game but since then he has been nerfed time and time again. His ultimate can absolutely come in handy from time to time, but his tactical has been nerfed so bad that it's practically unusable. It doesn't stop revives, it doesn't stop heals, and the activation time is so slow that it's easy to dodge. Until Seer gets a buff, which I hope doesn't happen, he is staying in the D tier. Next up we have Ballistic. He definitely got some buffs this season, like his sling weapon upgrading with him, but compared to the other assault legends, he's just the weakest. Sure, he can be deadly if you get the right gun or the right setup, but overall, he's just not impactful enough to move out of the D tier. Next up on the chopping block is Mirage. When it comes to support legends, Mirage is obviously the worst one in the game. His abilities don't deal any damage, and most of the time if you're playing against experienced players, they're not going to be bamboozled by your decoys. His revives can come in clutch, but that's all he has. When it comes down to it, Mirage is a ton of fun to play, but if you're looking to win or rank up this season, Mirage is the worst support character you can pick for your team. Can you guess who the last legend is in D tier? I hope so, because I feel like it's pretty obvious. Vantage. She's fun occasionally, but her kit doesn't really do much for the team. Most players have learned not to re-peek after getting hit by her ult, and a lot of Vantage players stay too far from the team, which is a huge issue. If they remove the laser from her ult, she might move up a tier, but for now, she's just better left unpicked. Next up, we have the C tier. These legends aren't the worst, but they still leave a bit to be desired. Our first legend in C tier is Ash. She got a big buff this season, making her tactical usable in her offhand and her perks are really fun, but she still feels like a less effective Wraith. Her ult is clunky, it doesn't always go far enough or where you need it to, and let's be honest, she has the ugliest heirloom in the game. Next up in this tier is Catalyst. She has a decent kit, especially with the ability to rebuild doors now, but she really just shines in the end game. Her spikes got nerfed and she's not really impactful in the early game, so I think putting her in the C tier makes sense. Basically for all of the same reasons that I have Catalyst in the C tier, I'm going to put Rampart in C tier as well. Sometimes you do catch people off guard with Sheila, but early and mid game, she's a lot less effective. I think if you make it into the late game or you have the right team, then Catalyst and Rampart might be B tier, but for now, we're gonna leave her in C. Next up in C tier is Crypto, which I think is fair. Overall, he's definitely a better recon legend than Seer, but he also requires a lot of in-game knowledge to play correctly. Also being the only legend that can remotely grab banners and respawn teammates is a huge benefit. Okay, these last two legends were pretty difficult for me. I put them both in C, but I think you could argue that they belong in B tier depending on the team comp and who's playing them. First up is Loba. Loba does a lot for the team, and in crowded in games, she's able to help the team safely grab heals, ammo, and sometimes a care package weapon. But I put Loba in C because when you compare her to the other support legends that are left to rank on this list, she doesn't have the ability to stop pushes, safely revive teammates, or mitigate any incoming damage for the team. The last legend in C tier is Octane. Let's be honest, most of the people picking Octane are just trying to imitate some Apex movement video that they saw on TikTok. An experienced Octane player is deadly and excels in 1v1 situations, but most of the time you see Octane players out of position or dying across the map away from their team. Octane's kit is great for himself. For the team, he only contributes the jump pad, which is outclassed by several other abilities in the game. Okay, now we're getting into some of the better legends in the game. We're starting off our B tier list with Newcastle. Newcastle not only provides cover for your team when you have none, but being able to drag your teammate to safety while reviving them is massive. Newcastle's ultimate also got a pretty nice buff this season and now acts like a Watson gin for a short time after deploying it. As far as support legends go, Newcastle is a solid choice. Okay, next up we have Maggie. Mad Maggie's in B tier for a couple of reasons. With the Digi being removed, she's one of the few legends that can still reveal legends through smoke. Her tactical is great for punishing enemies that move behind cover to heal and her ultimate has great functionality allowing you to aggressively push enemy teams, rotate to the ring, or even using it to disengage from fights. Maggie is a solid choice in B tier. 
Caustic is our next legend in B tier, and just like all of the other control legends, I think he excels in the late game. But where I think he's a little bit different is his ability to stop pushes with his ult, and unlike Catalyst, Caustic is able to hide his traps. So as you're moving through the map, you might randomly pick up pings on enemies that might be following you. Our last controller legend is also going to be in B tier. Watson has one of the most powerful ultimates in the game, stopping almost every offensive ability and her passive recharges your shield. She can lock down buildings in late game, and she also has the ability to slow down pushes in the early to mid game. For that reason, I put Watson in B. Next up, we've got Wraith. Wraith has always been popular. She's always been a solid choice, but with the extension of her ultimate and the addition of perks, she's just gotten better. Wraith offers safe rotations for your squad. She's also slippery and makes things really difficult and annoying for the enemy team. Next up in the B tier, we've got Fuse. If perks had never been released, Fuse probably would have landed somewhere in the C or even the D tier. Now, Fuse takes almost no damage from his own ultimate and can move freely through it without getting slowed. On top of that, he takes 50% reduced damage from explosives, which includes his Knuckle Cluster. When it comes to Assault Legends, Fuse is one of the best in the game. He's aggressive, has high damage output, and sometimes even provides wall hacks for you and your team. Your boy Gibby is up next. Gibby's just great. I don't know what else to say about him. He throws down cover for your whole team no matter where you are. He has faster revives inside of the bubble. And not to mention, he has the most health of any legend when you count his arm shield. And the last legend in B tier is Valkyrie. I know a lot of people say Valk is useless now that we have evac towers, but that just isn't the case. Not only can Valk ult from behind cover, but she takes your entire team at once, opposed to whoever takes the evac tower last just gets team shot into oblivion. Valk also has the ability to quickly take heightened fights, damage enemies behind cover, and she gets info for you and your team when you're landing. B tier for sure. If you guys have enjoyed the video so far, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel for more Apex content. We have A tier next. These legends are excellent picks and some of the best legends in the game this season. First up in A tier, let's just get it over with, Horizon. Nobody saw that one coming, right? Seriously though, Horizon is super strong. She can get your entire team up to height by herself, her ultimate can single-handedly win you a team fight if you use it correctly, and her passive allows you to drop down and challenge enemies easily. She has a phenomenal kit, and she deserves a spot in A tier. Pathfinder's next for A tier. He's excellent at cleaning up enemies when they're weak, escaping teams when he needs to, and provides rotations for the entire team. Pathfinder's perks also let him pick which type of scan he's going to get that game, which allows him to synergize from game to game depending on who your teammates are. He can reliably have his ult by scanning care packages, he does have a pretty big hitbox, which can be a little annoying at times, but if you put in the time to master his grapple, you can manipulate almost any situation to be in your favor. Bloodhound is the best recon legend in the game, and it's not even close. Bangalore is still a popular pick, and with digital threat being removed from the ground loot, Bloodhound has become even stronger. Bloodhound receives info as a passive, letting you know how close enemies are, and when ulting, can heal automatically when knocking an enemy. Bloodhound is never a bad pick for the team. Bangalore makes it into the A tier for a couple of reasons. She can push teams out of power positions with her ult. Her smokes are extremely versatile. She can either ruin line of sight for the enemy team or provide cover for her and her team. Her passive speed boost makes her incredibly slippery if you get caught out in the open. She did receive a slight nerf with the removal of the digital threat, but don't be fooled, she is still incredibly good this season. Lifeline. Oh, Lifeline. Second best support in the game. Obvious perks like being able to revive teammates while simultaneously providing cover fire are excellent, but there's so much more. Her care package has only gotten better over time with smart loot, and now she has the added perk of always having her drone for the team. If the rumors are true about her rework coming, she might be moving up to S tier. By the way, if you guys want to check out my video about the rework, you can check it out at the top right right now. Our last legend in A tier is Alter. I chose to put Alter in A tier because her kit is one of the best in the game. Alter being able to loot through walls at range could arguably be the strongest part of her entire character, but add in the ability to help teammates out of bad positions with her ultimate and also cheat her and her team to height or into buildings, and it's a no-brainer. I also think that with Alter being the newest legend added to the game, nobody has really adapted to her tricks yet, making her sort of a wild card. All right, guys, last but not least, we have S tier. And in this tier, we have just two legends, but they're in this tier for very different reasons. Our first legend in this tier is Conduit. Since her release, Conduit has been a top pick across the board, but she isn't in this tier because of her pick rate. Conduit shook up the core gameplay mechanic of Apex. The ability to instantly heal the shield health of her and her teammates disrupts the rhythm of Apex combat. Before Conduit, if you crack the shields of an enemy, you expected to have a small window to capitalize on that damage before they could heal. 
but Conduit removes that window entirely, often catching enemies in the middle of their push and punishing them for the aggressive play. I'm never sad to see a Conduit on my team, and for that reason, she's an S tier. Finally, we have Revenant. Revenant used to be the least picked legend in the game, but after his rework, he has become the most aggressive legend in all of Apex. He's able to take height in ways that no other legend can, he has the ability to capitalize on damage, and his ultimate makes him one of the hardest legends to fight one-on-one. -on -one. He's aggressive, agile, and provides information with his passive to the whole team. I'm going to be doing a tier list for all of the weapons soon, so make sure you guys subscribe and turn on notifications to get alerted when it drops. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with anything on the list, and let me know why. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.